Hi viewers, welcome to our channel Dissection of Human Body. In this session, we are going to discuss about the cervical vertebrae. There are seven cervical vertebrae. These seven cervical vertebrae are divided into typical and atypical vertebrae. The atypical are the first one which is called atlas, second one is the axis and the seventh one is called vertebra prominence and these are the typical cervical vertebrae just like the vertebra from the other regions are identified by a salient feature for example mammillary body in the lumbar vertebrae presence of costal facets in the thoracic vertebrae similarly the cervical vertebrae can be identified by the presence of the foramen transversarium in the transverse process. Features of cervical vertebrae will be explained by my colleague Dr. Aparna Muralidharan. Over to her. Hello viewers. In today's video, we are going to see the features of cervical vertebrae. As you all know, there are seven cervical vertebrae numbered from C1 to C7. At this juncture, Please remember that there are 8 cervical spinal nerves but there are only 7 cervical vertebrae. So as you can see here, all the 7 cervical vertebrae are displayed here. This is the first cervical vertebrae or C1 which is also called as atlas. This is the second cervical vertebrae which is also called as axis and this is C3, C4, C5 and C6 cervical vertebrae. This is the seventh cervical vertebrae, also called as vertebra prominence. So as you can see what is displayed here, C3 to C6 vertebrae look almost similar and they share a lot of similar features and so these four vertebrae are called as typical cervical vertebrae. Whereas C1, C2 and C7 has some major differences from the typical vertebrae. So C1, C2 and C7 are called as atypical cervical vertebrae. So first let us see the features of typical cervical vertebrae. So what is displayed here is a typical cervical vertebra. Before going to the details of typical cervical vertebra, let us just revise on the features of a vertebra. So most of the vertebrae that is cervical, thoracic and lumbar vertebrae contains a body in front and a vertebral arch behind. Enclosed between these two parts is a foramen which is called as the vertebral foramen that contains the spinal cord with its meninges and blood vessels. The vertebral arch contains two flat sheets of bone which are called as the laminae that meet in the midline posteriorly and the laminae are in turn connected to the body by means of these two pieces of bone which are called as the pedicles. As you can see here at the junctions of body with pedicle and laminae so many extensions can be seen and these are called as the processes. So we will have a midline process posteriorly which is called as the spinous process there will be two processes on either sides laterally, they are called as the transverse processes and at the junction of pedicle and laminae, we have the articular processes that bear articular facets. So these are features which are common among most of the vertebrae. Let us see what are the features that are present exclusive to a typical cervical vertebra. So this is the body of a typical cervical vertebra. As you can see here, it is a small body which is present in the shape of a transverse oval. The body of the vertebra contains a superior surface above, an inferior surface below, an anterior surface in front and a posterior surface behind. The superior surface of the vertebra articulates with the inferior surface of the vertebra above and the inferior surface of this vertebra articulates with the superior surface of the subsequent vertebra. What are the joints formed by the body of typical cervical vertebra? So most of the body forms the secondary cartilaginous joint by means of an intervertebral disc which consists of a nucleus pulposus in the center and it is surrounded by the annulus fibrosus. Apart from that, 
you can see two lip like extensions that emerge from the superior surface of the body of a typical cervical vertebra. This extension is called as the uncal processes. In the corresponding part, on the inferior surface, we can see two depressions or two bevels. So, so as you can see here, the uncal process of the superior surface articulates with the beveled surface of the inferior surface of the upper vertebra to form the uncovertebral joint which is a plain synovial joint. This joint is also called as the joints of Lushka. So the bodies of typical cervical vertebrae form a secondary cartilaginous joint by means of intervertebral disc and a synovial joint that is the uncovertebral joints. The anterior surfaces of the bodies are interconnected by means of anterior longitudinal ligament and the posterior surfaces of the bodies are connected by means of posterior longitudinal ligament. Attached posterolateral to the body is the pedicles and above the pedicle you can see a notch. This notch transmits the cervical spinal nerve of the corresponding number. So if this is the fourth cervical vertebrae, the notch present above the pedicle will transmit the fourth cervical spinal nerve. Posterior to the pedicle, we have two bony plates, two flat quadrangular sheets of bone. These are called as the laminae of the cervical vertebra and laminae of adjacent cervical vertebra are interconnected by a pair of fibroelastic ligament called as ligamenta flava. Now let us see the processes of cervical vertebrae. So the most classical feature of the cervical vertebrae as you can see here is the spinous process which is present at the meeting point of the two laminae in the midline posteriorly. So as you can see here, the spinous process of a typical cervical vertebra is bifid and it is present a little inferiorly. The bifid spine of the cervical vertebrae gives attachment to ligamentum nuke. Now coming to the articular processes, these are the articular processes, the superior and inferior articular processes that bears a pair of superior articular facets and inferior articular facets. The superior articular facets as you can see here are directed above and medially whereas the inferior articular facets are directed below and laterally. They are reciprocally directed for subsequent articulations. Now the most typical process that you can see on either side are called as the transverse processes. As you can see here the most characteristic feature that can be seen in the transverse process is this foramen. This foramen is present in all the cervical vertebrae, occasionally absent in the seventh cervical vertebra and this foramen is called as foramen transverse area. Because of the presence of foramen transverse area, the transverse process is divided and it forms several parts. So let us see the parts of the transverse process. There is a root present anteriorly. This root is called as the anterior root and this root is called as the posterior root. So foramen transverse area divides the transverse process into two parts. The anterior root ends at a tubercle. This tubercle is called as the anterior tubercle. The posterior root ends at a tubercle which is called as the posterior tubercle. Connecting the anterior tubercle to the posterior tubercle, we have a segment of bone which is called as the costotransverse bar. What passes through the foramen transverse arium of the typical cervical vertebrae? Foramen transverse arium transports the second part of vertebral artery along with the sympathetic plexus of nerves around it as well as the vertebral veins. So these are the features of typical cervical vertebrae. Now let us see the features of the atypical cervical vertebrae that is C1, C2 and C7.